Hello, hello. So I'm back again today with another unboxing. I know we done the Daemon Midius last video, but I did have this in the works to be ordered this week as well. Um, it's not as exciting because some of these inverts in here I already have in my collection. I just wanted to kind of add to the current population, but we'll get, get to that in a second. Um, but there is one new thing in here that I'm quite excited about. So this is ordered from Spider Shop where I get most of my stuff. They're always really reliable. You can select the day that you want it sent on and it always arrives really well packaged, heat packs where necessary and in a timely manner, so that's great. All right, so here's what we've got. Everyone looks good and healthy. There's a few surprises in here as well that I wasn't expecting, but that's fine by me. Uh, first things first, we have some more Dubia roaches. So this is to add to my current ongoing colony. And I really want to get that population going. But because I didn't have that many females, I thought, well, you know what, I'll order some more larger sized roaches just to help boost in their numbers and get some reproduction going and egg laying. Sorry, not egg laying. They don't lay eggs. They sort of birth them live, don't they? They look all good and healthy though. We'll get them added shortly. Second thing we have and I've got more, more than I expected in here, and these are bigger than I thought they would be, uh, some more assassin bugs. So I think there's five or six in here, and look at that big boy. The ones I've got currently are about this size, the smaller one near the top lid there, so this guy's much bigger. Um, I had three assassin bugs, and one of them died, I don't know why, but the other two have been fine and growing all right in here. So I just wanted to add to that because uh, I kind of wanted a bit of a crew of assassin bugs going. So having just two didn't quite seem right. So I'm glad to have some more and I'm pretty intimidated by this big boy. And the thing is, he looks like he's got something on him. You can see that. I don't know what that is. I hope he's all right. I can't really tell what it is. It's not a mite. It might be just a bit of debris or frass or something that's on him, but I'll keep an eye on him and see how that goes. They're pretty good. I'm sure they wouldn't send me anything that was unhealthy. And the next thing is two more Desmoxetes planata, which is pink dragon millipedes. So a couple of videos back, I was showing you how the population was really booming, which is great, but I just kind of wanted to have a few more adults in there to increase the diversity in genes and genetics as I'm no expert, but I think if they kept breeding with the same genes like brothers and sisters mating, whilst that's kind of okay for insects to a certain degree, I don't think it's healthy for that to keep happening. So I want to have a bit of a diverse gene pool in there and I thought this might help. So a couple more of those. And the last thing, I just had to quickly remind myself of what the name is, but this is Hillis Diardi. Have I said that right? Yeah, Hillis Diardi or Hylus Diardi, which is a jumping spider. Uh, they've been so hard to get hold of lately. I think everyone's getting on the hype. Everyone seems to be getting jumping spiders and wants to get jumping spiders, me included. And I did struggle to get one because um, everyone was out of stock, but thankfully they had some in, in store. So I thought I'll pick one up. I know most people get the Phidippus regius. Um, I couldn't find them anywhere. And I thought, you know what, I'll get something different. They, these guys require a bit more higher humidity from what I understand. So depending on the size of him or her, we will have to make a decision on what tank to put it on or put it in. Because ideally I want a front opening enclosure just so if they make their hammock on the top, I'm not gonna be disturbing that constantly while I open and close the cage. But before we look at this guy, I just want to get the other ones housed first and then we'll open him up and get him in his new home. All right, we'll do the boring one first, which is the Dubia roaches. Sorry, guys. Let's have a look in here. So, yeah, there's not much going on. There is young being produced, just not at a very speedy rate. You can see there's some females under there. I think there was one or two males in there. Definitely at least one male, obviously. But... Uh, it's just not going quick enough and I don't want to wait months and months and months. So let's get these little guys in the new home. I can probably just dump in the uh, egg crate there. I did ask and say I had a preference for more mature roaches and it seems like they've 
obliged me because there's certainly some mature males and females in here. Bit of a mix of size, which is great. I mean, ideally, I'd love to be exclusively using roaches and flies. Flies, obviously, for the mantids and then roaches of different sizes for everything else. Just because dubias are by far the most practical feeders that I've found to use. No smell, such a diverse range of size. The only downside is that they do tend to burrow. And I'd much rather get my own colony going because it can add up and they can start getting quite expensive. I don't want to be spending like three quid a week on top of everything else for uh, roaches when I can just breed them. Is it everyone? There's a little mealy worm there. What are these? Does anyone know? Are they mealy bugs, I think? I always find them in put in with feeder insects and I'm not sure why, whether maybe they clear up the droppings or something. Help with that, help with the cleanliness, I don't know. Excellent. We'll give them some food later and let's see how our pink dragons are getting on before we introduce the new adults. Plenty of activity now. There's loads of little burrows in the substrate and they're all getting their pink coloration growing really fast. So let's get the other adults in and we'll pop some food in there as well for them. And there we have two adult pink dragon millipedes. One of these looks a little bit smaller so I imagine it's um, not a fully grown millipede just yet. That's two. And what I'll do now is I'll just top this up. We'll give it. We'll give them some uh, more rotting wood, some calcium, and some fish flakes as well, just to keep their food supply up. As there's quite a lot in there now, but it is very difficult to gauge kind of when they need feeding, and we want to make sure they've got food available if they want it. Okay, next is my spiny assassin bugs. Let's hope these all get on. They should be absolutely fine together. Now, how am I going to navigate you guys in? Are you going to be behaved? There we go. As I was saying, back with Mike. Two big boys are in. I'm sweating from this. I mean, I know they're all right because I've read about them now and they're not as bad as I thought they were, but I still just don't fancy getting a, getting a rostrum pinged into me. All right, where are you other boys? Okay, let's get the two smaller ones in. I'm sure he only ordered three of these and they've sent me six, which isn't really a problem. It's just... Um, I think I'll need to house, rehouse them a bit sooner than I thought. All right, can I sort of place you on there and let you get in yourself? All right, I just sort of flicked the last one in there. Uh, mind your antennas, everyone clear. Done. Okay, that was probably the most stressful one that we've got. Not because I think they'll bite me anymore, but because if they bit me, it would v hurt very much. Try not to swear. So there we go, we've got a much more active assassin bug enclosure. How many have I got in here then? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think this enclosure will be okay for now. I'm not that well versed with assassin bugs, so if anyone's got any advice and you feel like this isn't really the right size, just let me know and I'll definitely upgrade them. In the meantime, I'll put something together, but I've got something specific in mind, so ideally I'll wait until I've had a chance to do that. But if this is too small, that's fine. I can put them in something temporary that will give them a bit more space. But for now, I'm sure they'll be absolutely fine in there. Okay, and now the star of the show, what is it called? Hylus Diardi? Yes, Hylus Diardi. Learning. So what I'll do first, let's, uh, let's open her up, have a look, because I just want to gauge what size she is before we make an enclosure for her, just so we've got that appropriately gauged. Mm. Are you okay in there? Not looking good. Just going to open this up because I'm a bit concerned. Are you just scared or are you dead or are you in a pre-molt? Okay, so I don't know how well you can see, but it doesn't look like there's any movement there. I don't want to mess around with her too much, just in case she is 
in a pre-malt. But I don't know, her abdomen looks, or his abdomen looks really deflated. Oh, that's a real shame if, if, uh, if they haven't made it through shipping. Okay, well I don't want to disturb her too much just in case it is a malt. So I'm going to leave her in her own little enclosure uh, in the humidity just to see if she does pull through and if it is a malt. And I just want to get a short video as well of her so I can send that over to the guys at Spider Shop and see if there's anything they can do because they're, they're pretty good with stuff like that if, um, if there is anything that arrives dead. Like I said, there's no slight on them because I know that I've had so much stuff from them and this is the first thing that's arrived um, potentially dead. So I'm sorry to end on such a downer after hyping it up so much about getting this jumping spider out and rehousing it and stuff. But it's just the way it goes. Unfortunately with this hobby, the invertebrates are very fragile and they just don't make it through shipping sometimes. But we'll see, I guess in 24 hours or so, we'll have my answer as to whether she's gonna pull through or whether she has unfortunately passed away. But thanks for tuning in nonetheless and taking the time out of your day to watch this video. If you like this kind of content, I usually post something at least once a week. Until then, stay safe and I'll see you on the next one. So I just wanted to tag this on to the end because it's so weird. I uh, went into the bathroom literally five minutes after ending the video and there was a jumping spider in the bath. I mean, they're really, really tiny, the UK versions of a jumping spider. But it was just too weird, so I thought I'm going to try and get some macro footage of the little guy. It's really hard to film though because it's so small. They're just as amazing though when you get a close look at them like this. And just as cute, but I let this guy go because it's not really viable to uh, keep ones from the wild. But I'll take this as a sign from the universe to continue my plight to actually get and keep a jumping spider. Whether the one I ordered survives or not. Fingers crossed.